welcome everybody to our third installment of our virtual classroom. So we keep tweaking our format to make it more interactive and more fun as we go. So I'm particularly excited about this course today. So this course today is a cutting course. It's our retro forever fringe. And we have a special guest with us today, um, Eddie Uker, who is our global artistic team from Guatemala. And as we were planning this for you, it was excited for it to be dueling shears. You're actually gonna see two haircuts happening at the same time from two different countries. So I'd like to start today by turning this over to Michael Sean Corby, our global creative director. Hello, hello everyone. And thank you for what I call the second show on the rebirth of these um, creative live webinars where we are really focusing on not only the looks, but on the trends that are happening around them from around the globe. So speaking of around the globe, um, we have many watching from Spain and Latin America. So I wanted to say, um, and if I mess this up, I apologize. Hola, bu bu buenos tardes, bienvenidos, amigos latinoamericanos. How did I do, Eddie? <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, you, you, you've heard him a little bit now, but what I really want to do again is thank you for all the positive feedback you gave on our last class and keep it coming. Remember, if you have questions, type them into the box. And I'm sure there are a lot of you that do. This is our first ever completely sold out class, which means there's probably about 250 of you plus plus that signed up. If you know somebody who didn't get in, I'm sorry, register faster next time when you know Eddie is gonna be here. Um, but also we'll be rerunning these um, and we'll be posting them on our YouTube channel and elsewhere. So you didn't miss it, you'll get it later. Um, so without further ado, I would like to bring out our special guest today, who is Eddie Uker. Welcome, Eddie. Thank you for having me, Michael. Sean, how are you? I'm doing really good. So <laughs> I, I'm not surprised that we sold out. I mean, with social media, it's like you have 100,000 or more people following you and the, and the hair you do. So I'm like, tell us, tell us about that. What is that like to be a major influencer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't call myself like an influencer. Most likely when you're doing something and you love it, and you put a lot of passion through it, people will follow you even though you, you don't want to. I would love to share with all my Latin America friends and hairdressers that there is no reason why you need to be creating content and doing something good and sharing with the social media network because it's for free. I mean, you don't have to pay for posting and giving a like, it's for free. I share the work from someone else, it's for free. So I think this is something pretty, pretty cool right now that we have that platform to share with all of you guys, whatever we are doing. And I'm so thankful for all the follows and the people who is like really getting into my job all day. And I'm getting a lot of messages asking me for doing like some hair or sharing some tips. And I feel like a rock star. It makes me feel so good. I think that uh, I know that I'm not famous, but you know that we as hairdressers are always looking for this rock star vibe and feeling like artists. So that makes me feel like that way. Well, you can all you can be our rock star anytime. So Eddie, the focus today is Latin America. You know, we're we're doing this retro fringe. We're gonna yes. do. Colleen calls it the dueling scissors. Um, I like to call it the dichotomy of shape, meaning we're going to, we're going to really show two completely different ways by just making little changes. You can have a totally different look. But before we get to that, we have some other friends you want to share with us. And I want to start with, if we could go to the first slide, Colleen, I want to start with why Guatemala? What does Guatemala bring? Did I say it right? It's not Guatemala like we say in US, it's Guatemala, yeah? Yeah, Guatemala, that's right. 
Why Guatemala? Well, actually, I think that I found my culture like pretty rich with a lot of background, cultural background. We do have a lot of um, handicrafts who are creating jewels and fabrics and textiles, like not using machinery. That's pretty pretty awesome because we do have that these ancestral ways to create those things, and that give us. For me, I would say that I'm so happy because I learned how to braid hair in so different ways just because I have that culture in me. So this is pretty cool. And also I think that we are creating not only a fabric, we're also creating jewels um, out of, I don't know, just in a rock. So that makes us a really true artist. And I think that this is something that I feel really relate to because Whenever you're going to a market, whatever tour you're going to, these small places, like which is really far from the city, is a different world. You will see different kind of persons. You will see different kind of clothing. You'll see a lot of textiles, a lot of colors, and we do we do have also like a, our Hollywood, which is our summer vacation, and we do have several cultural uh, things going on about our churches because this is a Catholic, really religious culture. So we do have a lot of influences. And I think that right now that helps us a lot to um, add something to fashion. So let's say right now, a lot of fashion shows are involved either with braids and adding something to the hair, like um, like a part of our culture and bringing it out to a fashion show. And it, show, it showcase really nice to a Vogue magazine and we do have some uh, features in some international magazines, really spotlighting those cultural things. So I think that it, this is a really good mix about inspiration, culture, and something that we can apply every single day to our guests back in the chair. Yeah, I love it. Well, let's get into the trends and those fabrics are incredible and the colors. Let's see your first trend in your Latin America trend report. Shapes yes. and prints. Tell me about this. Are you seeing it, Eddie? No, I'm not. To go to, so you have an option of a line, one box, two box, or many boxes. Hit the one box. It was the only way I could see it. <laughs> and can everybody else see it, Colleen? Or? You'd be able to. Because we, the only way I can see it is to go um, show sharing view, so. Did you find it, Eddie? Mm -hmm. You see where you see the faces? Mm -hmm. oh, there in the far left, there's a line, a box, two boxes, and many boxes. You see that? All the way left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hit the one box, not the line, just the one box. Everybody else sees it but us. It's yeah, so pretty much. <laughs> Thank you for letting us. Okay. Okay, well that took it away. Okay, yeah. You see it, Eddie? Yes. Continue, tell us about these trends. Well, right now, I think that this is something pretty cool that I need to show with all of you guys. Our street style is quite different from another countries. Um, I would see, I would share that the influence that we have coming from um, the fabrics, the patterns, the boho chic idea. We do have that this flowy hair, but we will also mix a really tight ponytail, as you can see, with this flow, really flowy skirt. There is some things that I would love to share with you guys. First thing it will be high waist. This is something that is really common right now. Everyone is wearing like a really high waist and a belt. This is something that is so nice and it's coming back. During quarantine, we found out that this um, tie-dye trend, which was something coming from Pinterest and social media, it really became a huge and strong trend. Everyone is really involved with those things. As you can see, this guy is wearing like a, like a hoodie with a tie-dye. I think that I call it myself because I did it. I just pick up some um, of my old clothes and I start playing with those things using a YouTube a tutorial but at the end it 
I found this is really interesting. So again, this is so cultural, this is so us, this is so handicraft. So I love it and I will, I, that's why I place it there because I think this is something that we need to follow really, really close. If you don't have, I mean, if you're like if during quarantine back in home and you want to do something new with your clothes, this is something that you should try. And there's a lot of big brands right now. It's launching whole collections um, about tie-dye, like fast fashion as Forever 21 or those small stores, big stores, I'm sorry. They're getting this into something really current. So I would love to share those things. Yeah, and so I'm very grateful for a lot of those shapes because you know, being at home so much, I have found so many good vegan restaurants that deliver and I am, you know, putting on some love on my, on my billy. So I love the fuller shapes. So tell me this, Eddie, in the next slide, so I'm saying volume is back. <laughs> um, uh, let's talk about this we're calling the celebrity and, uh, you know, the social bouncy glam. So explain this to us. This is a hair trend, I assume, yeah? Yes, but right now everyone is running away from flat iron and it's getting more bouncy, volume, 90s vibe. As you can see in our goddess, J-Lo. Everybody, everybody knows J-Lo. And I think that this is quite cool because she is timeless. I got people who is like, I don't know, 17 years looking for some j -Lo in inspired hairstyles, but I do have another class who are like a little bit older that they will get into, they want to look like Jane. For Latin America, this is quite strong. And I love to have her as a reference because she's changing the hair like a lot. In this picture particularly, she has this big undone texture hair with a lot of volume. And I think it's effortless, but it looks so chic and I love it. This is something that we could see in a red carpet. This is something that we could see in a fashion show. I would say, like you, like you name it, glam, because this is something that we could use every um, single way. So I like you're talking about the change, and that's that's the thing I'm noticing from your images and from the way you're talking about style. Is that one of the primary things you think our clients are looking for right now? Or that they're gonna be looking for is versatility in their shapes? Totally. I think that, but this is based on our influencers right now. Uh, Belinda, it's a Latin America, well, she's Mexican, but she's a big influence for us in Latin America. She is, um, she has this, uh, she's making a lot of changes right now. She's wearing either wigs with short haircuts, but then you'll see her with the really long, long hair you'll see it with flat, slick, like shiny, like Donatella Versace look, but then she will turn into something different like Cindy Crawford volume. So there is mixing of times, but there is also mixing of lengths and shapes. So I think that the main idea right now is versatility. They want, they want to look different every single, every single day. As you can see in the, in the, in the trend report, you'll see guys, uh, uh, the same girl with long hair, the same girl with short hair, she has this effortless undone look, but she will also have these glam waves, which I think is pretty common in our country, in our um, countries in Latin America, just because we will love to see us different every single day. And I call it myself, if you follow me guys, or if you do me the favor to follow me on my social media, you'll see that I'm always changing color. I get bored. So that's something that is really common in us. So that's why I think they are changing a lot. And this is sort of like a challenge for the hairdressers because they are making a lot of, making a lot of change, a lot of ideas, bringing a lot of hair. And I think this is quite cool. Okay, nice. Yeah, I, I change my look often as well. Up or down, up or down, that's about it. <laughs> lazy or not lazy. So in our next slide, Eddie, you're gonna not only talk about the trend, but you're gonna show us, because I, I look at this trend and I see complicated. Nobody has time for this. This takes, I don't know, some very detailed special classes. I mean, this looks like, I don't know, you have to use a hammer and nails on her head to keep that in. How do you do that? Well, there is some times that we're looking at, like I said, something different. Right now, I think that 
we don't need to recreate the wheel. The wheel that it's now, it's working, it's working fine. So I think that everything is outside. The only thing that, the only small thing that we could do so is small changes that we could use to recreate things and we could use in a different way. Um, as you can see in the, in the pictures that I was showing with you guys right now, there is like the pearls that it's really into trend right now. So let's say that we do have this slick back ponytail or we do have this low bun without any effort shine slick wow and we need to we're looking something different so what we could do it's like a, i would say anthem the look. Okay. Come on. so what i'm gonna share with you guys is i got this small pieces of pearls and the easiest way to add it to the hair will be using some eyelash glue okay so basically you could you could get the, 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 the one that you like the most, my my tip will be getting a dark for darker hairs, and this is clear for my blonde girls. I'm gonna add a little bit, really, really fast, towards my pearls. Okay. You're setting your eyelashes, and then you will place it right next to the one that I just did. And that's it. Oh, that is so easy. And wh where would we get something like that with these pearls? Well, I'll, I'll recommend you to get in the dollar stores. <laughs> uh, into um the fabric stores there is a lot of things that you could use and i will challenge you guys not only using pearls but maybe you could you will find something interesting like i don't know some small pieces um sequins something that you would add to your hair and make it funnier make it like like fashionable and maybe this is for someone who want to walk around like a red carpet or going to a fashion show or if you're doing editorial hair, uh, hair for photo shoots or um, your backstage fashion show. This is something that you recommend to your clients and I think this is quite cool. And another thing on this slide is our baby hair. This is a, I would say this is a really American trend that no one was taking care of right now until we got this lace front wigs going on like really really common right now everyone is changing color using lace front wigs and based on those things people it's getting into the baby hair around the face and adding some pearls i think it's funny and i think it make it a little bit um different and interesting which is something that we're looking as you can see the pictures are like really really simple hair looks but with those things you're making like interesting so i think it's nice I love it. And what we'll do is we'll we'll we can tag some of these resources when we post on YouTube as well because I think it would be really cool for, you know, a special occasion or people doing tutorials or once we do get back fully to work something special for weddings. In the next yeah. slide, tell me about this chains of love trend you're talking about. Well, based on the the, the, the previous one, I think we're looking at something to make our our either braids, ponytails, or just regular hair, like different. So uh -huh. you can get this in a hardware store, you can get it in a fabric store. There is like for the necklace chains that you would use and you start, you could start braiding those things. This is something that it's pretty, pretty fashion and every hair artist in Latin America is using at least once in a while during the TV shows that they're hosting because it could be so, so, so different. You could use it in the front, you could use it in the back, you could pray with it. It's really, really easy to handle. My advice will be getting, instead of um, metal ones, you should get plastic ones, because it's gonna be less heavy, and you could play a little bit better with those. And it's easier for you to unchain the chain or just break small pieces about this and adding either bobby pins or hair pins to secure the chain. It's it's quite easy and it's giving a huge transformation whenever you're doing, a, let's say, um, uh, a braid in the front. Let's say the first picture, she has 
undone waist and she has two braids in the front with the chain and that it's totally a photo shoot look and I love it. If you wanna play with your clients and inviting them to create something different or let's play with something that it's not like, I'm a, I recommend those things. Uh, I love it. Good tip to not actually use chains because that's oh. right out of the head. Eddie, let's talk color and then we're gonna get into the cuts. Sure. Our, our hair track, well, our clients here in Latin America, they are looking something that is fresh, modern, they will add a lot of uh, dimension, but they will also want something that they don't need to go back to the salon like really often. I do have clients that travel a lot and they will love to have something that it doesn't need to go like every month to our salon for a retouch or something like that. So this is a, a trend that I love it. It could be so nice in short hair, as you can see in the last one. It will add a lot of movement, a lot of dimension, but it will be also a really good um, idea when whenever we're working long hair. Our Latin clients, when whenever they have long hair, as I was explaining at the beginning, we are like so, so um, depending on how we look, right? So if they have long hair, they'll feel beautiful, they'll feel prettier. So we do have no middles. We, we do have either longer hair clients or really short hair clients. We have this bo short bob, like a box bob, or we do have these long layers haircuts. Yeah. So I would say that this is really nice because it looks really, really fresh, really modern. People will love it. There is a right now a trend, as you can see in our blonde girl, which is basically a, basically a face framing idea. They are like, bringing the old light around the face. This is making us feel like glowy and healthier. And the only tip that I would recommend on these colors, because this is really long-term um, treatments, I would go with uh, our franchise Color Care, because yeah. I think this is one of my favorite franchises just because it has Pretty simple shampoo conditioner in one of our wig places, which is going to be helping us to maintain and extend the color of her, whatever color we're using. So yeah. I think this, is a, this is a great choice, and it, it needs to look shiny and look serious. As you can see, there is volume, there is movement. So anyone who has who is wearing this um, type of hair color, it will be a showstopper. I love it, and we have. So much information coming out about color care. I, actually, Colleen's working on something right now, which is amazing. Let's touch on boy cuts and textures because it's quite different. Everybody wore a fade. There was no such thing as definition at the sideburns or in the back for, I wanna say, five, six years. Like I would look, I could look at entertainment and know that was 2006, that was 2007. There was like a tipping point nearly 10 years ago where everything started to get faded regardless of length. Tell me what's happening now for men and then we're gonna move on to our cuts. Yes, well, but I think that's something that it's really current right now. It's people is running out from our barber shops. It's not bad. I think that we need to go like more modern about our hair and effortless looks. As you, yeah. as you were saying, there's a lot of people who was like, who was wearing like this skin fades and pompadours and it was like so good as a trend but right now people and i would say boys are looking something like natural and instead of going for a paste or a clay or something like that they are turning into products like our thickening cream or our nourishing styling cream because it, it will help us to have um, um shiny soft and healthier hair so yeah. i it's something that i would love to share with you guys because instead of guiding our clients to get something really, really with a lot of definition, I would um, suggest maybe we could share with them some of these pictures so they will get some natural textures and uh, it, it looks so modern, so fresh. And you can see it either fashion stores or street styles. And I, I, think, we should, I think we should say that the next time we come together, because I actually have boys in my house, I could cut their hair. I could actually have a live model instead of a dolly. So maybe that's a date. Maybe that's the next one for us, Eddie, is really um, 
showcasing some men's hair. So moving on now. So we know that we're talking about the retro fringe here. When I'm talking about the dichotomy of style and when Colleen's talking about dueling shears is we are gonna go back and forth and back and forth for an entire hour here today. And we are going to share with you the little tweaks, the little things that you can do differently to have a completely different look out of the same basic step-by-steps. So Eddie, you're gonna be doing the retro sleek today. Sleek, smooth, crisp fringe. It can be worn with or without fringe. And while Eddie is prepping, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna show my slide of what I'm gonna be working on, which is the 70s retro trend. Even my hair today, I tried to feather it, but let's face it, tomorrow's haircut day, it wasn't really working. But it's about putting that looseness into the hair. It's about having that versatility because clients need things to last a bit longer, putting that effortless wave. So I'm gonna show you how to build softer fringe into it. I'm gonna show you how to build a wavier texture into it right down to the finish. So Eddie, let's start with you. How are we gonna cut the perimeter of this cut? Well, thank you, Michael, Sean. I, I split the way that I'm always teaching haircuts in three ways. My first one will be product, second one will be application, and the third one will be technique. So I think this is pretty important for us because there is some, some hairs that need more product than another ones. So I'll talk really, really fast about my cutting, my cutting lotions and uh, my favorite ones. Um, the one that I love the most, and it is one of my fan favorite products, I'll go with my weightless spray, we call it Magic Water. And it's basically a um, smoothing and styling spray, and it's gonna help us to block humidity and control it. Something that I love about this product is that it's weightless. You can feel it, but it's gonna be working. Yeah, that sucks. That sucks for me. I would love to share a tip for my hairdressers who has Latin American um, hair, like clients. This type of hair is really coarse. It's really thick, and it will need not all, not only control. I mean, we need to control the hair, but we need also a little bit of extra conditioning. So my product will be my perfecting spray. What it does is ba basically perfecting my hair and it's gonna help me to control adding moisture, adding conditioning, and it will help me to detangle. So basically I will have more control for this thick and coarse hair. So I will add this towards my hair and I, I'll open my hair and, open, and apply the product underneath. I need to fill the product. I need to make sure that the whole section that I'm um, cutting right now has this product on it. So I will come through it to better distribution of the product. And we know that you know how to cut. I mean, we, we're not gonna teach you how to cut. We are going to share with you guys our methodology, which is called SMART. And I think I found this really genius because I think that we need to find smarter ways to create the things. So. We know how to cut and we know how to do a point cut. But what we're looking, it's making us as hairdressers feel the artistry in us. So one of the letters on our SMART methodology stands for artistry. And this is something that I've always invited my hairdressers and my followers to go through it. So instead of having this angles and being like so specific about like technique, I'm going to give you a fresh modern way using my artistry to create something really current and really fresh. So I'm going to come through it and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my comb as a guide and let's see, I'm going to have this, my comb parallel to the floor and I'm going to start cutting in the center. But instead of going a, a, like a really, really deep point cut, I'm going to start like creating my first angle, which is part of my triangle. I'm going to go with the next one. 
and going this way. The main idea about creating this texture going to, um, let's say, the left side is creating the first part of, of my haircut. I'm gonna do basically the same thing with this part. And this is just a um, visual guide, guys. We're not having, we're not using this strong guide and we don't, we don't need to go like measuring here because as I said, we need to just try to get our artistry out. As soon as we got the first part going this way, we're going to do it backwards. So what we're trying to get it's a triangle shape at the end. And what is gonna help us is going to make the line softer, even though we're looking for a blunt line. And it also will help us to make this really soft. So basically it could go out as a, like, a, like a convex and it's gonna turn inside as a concave. So it will turn really versatile and we could play with the texture really, really fast. Love it. Can you show us the sides as well, like how we're connecting this? Sure. Using as a guideline, just let me finish this part. Using my, my guideline, which is basically the one that I just did, we are going to come through this again using my perfecting spray. And there is sometimes whenever I'm cutting, I'm cutting uh, so fast that I'm cutting with friction. So what it, uh, the perfect spray helps me to seal the cuticle and it helps me to cut even faster. So let's say that I'm going to connect this part using this guideline and as well, I'm gonna point cut the whole section going to the back, come through it, and then we are going to do it backwards. I mean, going to the right. Just to create triangles at the end that's gonna make our line feel softer. And even though we have this strong line, it doesn't show us like at this oldy, strong line like a, like a square that we're not looking for those things all right eddie so i'll let you keep working there i'll take over on my head from here and what, what you might notice about what eddie did there that i think is super cool is that you know the dreaded space behind the ear he's kind of saving that for last so that he's created the line he wants so what doesn't happen those accidental molly molly mullets i call them so um, really good work there. I'm excited to see the final result. So on my dolly here, um, what I did was I pre-cut the length following the same guidelines there, using the same textured point cutting in both directions to give it a nice soft line. And I would say I actually maybe cut even a little bit more into it. So, um, so this look can be even a little bit softer. Remember, this is the dichotomy. His is sleek and smooth and sharp and crisp. Everything I'm doing is very soft and wavy. I blew her out with blowout, and I don't have to tell any of you, I know how obsessed you are, as I am, as everyone is, with blowout. And I am just now figuring out some of the coolest things. Like, did you know with blowout, you can spray it on short, wet hair, comb it back, it dries naturally, and your hair is like magically in that position without being stuck and stays clean for a week. That's your tip of the day. <laughs> what I'm gonna do now, we gave her a nice blowout. I didn't even use a round brush. I just used a Denman brush like so. So a vented Denman brush, single prong, blew her out. And then what I wanted to do is just give it a little bit of bend. I'm gonna show you how I got the bend in the hair. See how it's not a forced bend? It doesn't look like birthday cake hair, I call it. It just looks like a nice soft bend. I'm gonna show you how to get that too. But I did one side here, and what I wanna show you is that what I'm doing is I'm using different 
aircrafting techniques. What I like to say, because we know we have five aircrafting techniques in our smart with update now. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that aircraft can start with length, which aircraft for length is scissor is going down. I like to think of it as my airplane. And then right at the last second, everyone is safe on the airplane. Yay, everybody lives. And so you're down and then you're up in a tapping motion. And so I can do length, but what I also wanna do is texture, softness, PCness. It's This is like aircraft for everything when you're looking at the fringe. And how you do that is you work in the center and then you go just off center a little bit to do your next section. And you just keep tapping, making sure that you're doing length in the beginning. And then once you're starting to see that shape, once the shape is coming in, I've just got to turn her just a little bit so I am actually seeing and I don't make something ugly. Then I'm going to reverse it. Palm is to the head and I'm coming away and I can do it in one of two ways. I can work down and really follow, you know, her cheekbone and follow the eye there. See how it's opening it up? Similar to our curtain fringe that we taught a couple of months ago, but just a little bit more defined and a little bit more of a freestyle type thing. And, and now you're starting to see why I call mine the 70s version of it, right? Are you starting to feel a little Charlie's Angels vibe coming out here? And look at it. Look at what you're doing as you're working. Do I need to take a little more length? Well, then that's going to be aircraft for length. Do I comb it down and feel like it's too hard? Well, then I'm going to come down and this is aircraft for softness. Or we can do it, we can elevate the length, right? If you elevate, what is that giving me? That's giving me a little bit of a blend to the one I'm doing. Watch how easy this is. So none of that looks chunky or heavy. I can take all that. I can lift the entire corner. I can hold it. And then I can take it right down to where it's living at that bottom corner there. I don't want to take it away. And you're getting this incredible, sexy, soft fringe. So I'll keep tweaking on this a little bit. Eddie, what are you working on over there in Guatemala? Well, right now I just finished my whole uh, linger. And what I'm, I would love to share with you guys, it will be basically the way that we are creating our, our fringe. Um, there is so many ways that we know to create a fringe, but we found this one pretty, pretty fun, pretty modern, and uh, pretty easy. We know that we're looking at some techniques that make us feel like, um, that, that help us to save some time, right? Because we know that that is a long time, it's money. So what we're looking at right now is creating um, a triangle section in the top. And we are going to bring the hair towards the face and we will decide how long are we going to cut our fringe. Right now, I'm going to start cutting like about the nose so we will see the round shape that we could create. I'll do it first with my hands because it's going to help me to control better the, the hair and it will ho also help me to um, show you the technique that we are looking. We need to come through the hair. We need to have this really, really tight, pointing to the tip of the nose. And we're gonna do, if we're gonna twist it um, with a lot of tension. So we could create this concave, this circular surface around the face. And I love it because I think there's sometimes that we are cutting this technique and we are going this way, we are going backwards just to create this the shape, but right now I think it's the easiest and fastest way to create it. We most of the times are using our comb to control the texture and the tension. So basically we're going to pull it this way and we're going to use our comb as a, as a, um, as a ruler, as a guide. So we could do 
either point cut if you want to have softer line let's see and this is the easiest way to create this shape Eddie, i have a question for you Yes. So if you are left-handed and you turn it the opposite direction that you did, do you get the same result? Yes. The only, my advice will be tension. And if you don't feel like, like really secure using your comb, because at the beginning I was having trouble to control the hair like this, my advice will be do it with your hands. So I'll show you pretty fast. So instead of getting, uh, using our comb, what we could do, it's secure my hair like this, twist it, pull my other feet, put my other fingers on top of this one and twist it. Not pulling out, not pulling off, not like this, just to, just to see what, whatever I'm doing. Try to have it like next to your eyebrows or the guideline that you're using, trying to get zero elevation. It will help us to not to create a lot of um, texture that we don't need. So either way, going this way or this way, whenever you're a left-handed or right-handed, as long as you're having a lot of tension, that will be the trick. Fantastic. So now I'm going to show you a little something. So you can see I continued with, as I call it, aircrafting for everything today. And you can see it's just giving a really beautiful soft shape um also i don't know i got a mannequin that totally has like a bald spot whoops um she's stressed out too it happens um but she she would look a little bit better if she didn't fully have a bald spot there but hey we have clients with bald spots too so that's totally fine so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to continue the softening process here and so i'm going to work from the back and what I'm going to take are radius sections through the back, triangular sections, and I'm going to work from the mast to the mast for the who are smart certified with living proof. Then I'm going to work from the north to the south point, and I'm going to make sure that anywhere in this center zone to the crown that everything I'm doing are, is um, is uh, just straight vertical sections. And then when I get to the back, that's when I'll take a radius or a more triangular section. The simple thing I want you to know about this is for this type of layering where I'm going for a very soft look, I'm just gonna pick up a triangular section here at the back on dry hair. I'm gonna comb it up, hold the head up, and I'm not gonna cut in motion, but rather I'm gonna let a good indication of the length fall. And then I'm gonna just start tapping, right? This is give axis giving me a little bit of shape. I'm just gonna take off those last little ends right there with each section. Taking the same thing. So now I'm half of a radius section and I'm all of a straight vertical section, holding it up combing it out, taking it to where all this hair is falling from my grasp. And then when I'm there, just barely tap, tap, tapping those ends and it will start to give you a lovely, sexy shape. And watch how I can do this all the way to the front, hold the head, bring it up, let that hair fall, now I'm seeing a previous guide in there as well. And then with this front section, we work so hard on it. We don't wanna just kill it with layering. So bring it back just one step, hold it to the part, bring it up. Again, this is one of our foundational techniques for those of you who are new to SMART. And it really just, it's something you can put in your hair toolbox to add to what you're doing. But look how they just brought the whole thing to life. Look how now when I put my fingers in that, I'm getting some volume, I'm getting some softness.
that's instant texture that you can see, that your client can see. Your client isn't nervous or scared because we're doing this portion when she's already dry, when she already loves her blowout, right? So once she has a good blowout, you can get away with a lot more layers. You try and cut so much as that on wet hair, she's feeling insecure about it. She's not sure how much you just took off her head. So she naturally has a little bit of anxiety. I'm gonna do this here, same thing. So you can kind of see this triangular section straight up. I'm not worried about the hair at the bottom, why? because I'm letting it all fall anyway. See how that's all falling? I can now gently see that guide and I am bringing it forward. I'll continue doing this until I finish. What are you working on, Eddie? Thank you, MSC. Well, you said something that, it's, that, that, that sounds so good about like people getting nervous about some techniques. Um, I feel like this way, whenever I have a client that is sitting on my chair, I need to use my thinning, sheet, my thinning shears, and they go like, uh, I, don't, I don't want you to use those shears. What are you doing with those shears? I mean, so I found really important some um, of our uh, techniques in our methodology, SMART, which is, I think it's really easy to recreate our thinning shears, but with a lot of control. Based on our blonde haircut, who has these strong lines, I would, I would love to have something to play with it. And uh, instead of using my thinning shear, what I would do is grab a section, I would say maybe half inch. So I need, it needs to be like really thin so I can see through it. And I'm gonna pull it out away from the head. And I'm going to try to get some um, sections inside of my section. So I'm going to weave it just maybe two or three parts. My advice, guys, is try as we are doing a weaving for um, highlights. We need to have so a lot of control. It's not like I need to go like this and cutting and then my, my next section. Because what I'm looking is at when I need to recut or retouch or something with this haircut, I know what I did and where I did it. So basically I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to open my scissors pointing down. I'm gonna lift the top part. I'm gonna weave, try to get the same size of every single section and this is part of our methodology which is our, our module called uh, disconnect because what we're looking is trying to get some disconnection inside of my haircut so i'm going to get my scissor flat to my section and i'm going to close it i'm going to start cutting in the circular movements going out and what i'm trying to do with this one it's remove weight but also has a lot of control in it so I'm not touching length. And as you can see, I have these small pieces that I can see through it. So this will add a lot of control to my uh, removing weight technique. So I'll go maybe one part yes, one part no, and this, then the next one I'm gonna repeat the same process. Again, this needs to be really thin so I can see through it. I will leave my top part I'll weave same size, flat the scissor towards my hair section and start cutting in circular motions. Cutting towards me so I could get these parts out and I need to see through the sections that I cut. So in the case that I need to recut this part, I know where I cut it and this is gonna help me a lot to get this inside movement on my uh, Bob. So instead of having this wig, one left um, look, e either I'm going to flat iron it or creating the look that Michael Sean is doing right now, it's going to get a lot of movement inside and it's not going to affect the top. So it's not going to show a small piece on the top and we're going to control a lot of the frizz. Okay. So I'll continue doing this. <laughs> so <clears throat> in our typical dueling fashion here, for mine, the last thing I want to do, sorry, I gotta pin my video so I can see I'm blind as a bat. Um, 
So the last thing I would want to do is, is collapse this beautiful bouncy volume she has going on. So what I'll do instead is I'll build a little bit of texture into her hair. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a couple sections on each side so you can see it's continuing with that volume, um, but it's just done a little bit different. And unlike Eddie, I'm going to use um, actually bigger sections because I don't want it to have too much of an impact on the hair, but rather I want to create stairs within the shape. And so the, uh, the cleanest way to show it, I'll get as close as I can here. Did I cut off the head? Hopefully not. I'll raise her up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a section, it's a couple inches thick, nice and thick from the front hairline. I'm gonna hold it out. And my shear is in an upward Section. So I'm going to weave sections out of there, just like when you're highlighting, try and get your sections similar. I'm going to leave out the top section because God knows I don't want to put anything there. And then what I'm going to do, instead of rolling or working in a circular motion outward, I'm going to push down toward the head. You know, I'm just gently tapping down toward the head. And what I'm looking for is the hair that I'm keeping, right? Because what's happening is we're going a little bit shorter toward the bottom of that section. And so it works like stairs pushing up the hair. You see how instantly she's got a bit more texture, a bit more movement on that side, just from one big section. Let's do another one, working into the back here. And I'm weaving through that section. So going in, taking a little more hair, weaving through that, and then just tapping, 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 right? And when I take that out, you can see it's going short to long. That means that I took the most to her nape and I took the least, the closest to her crown. So it's gradually working in an upward direction. That is complete, right? Like you see that there's no line of demarcation, even though we've layered the ends, right? A bit of a tapering. Even though we've created that kind of texture. Using these smart techniques, we get all of that shape, we get all of that movement, but we don't have to compromise anything by seeing these steps or lines. I've told the joke a million times. You've all had clients say, last time you gave me two or three layers, can you give me one layer this time? Or can you give me 10 layers this time? If she can count the layers, you're doing it wrong, right? So adapt techniques where she's not seeing steps and dips and chunks into her hair, but rather she's seeing glamorous, gorgeous beauty like this. All right, Eddie, what are you working on over there? Right now, um, there is something that I will need to mention that I need to mention uh, about something that you were saying. Yes, there is a lot of people that would love to have this strong line at the end, like the perimeter, but they will also have they would love to have a lot of bangs and layers and movement, but they don't need to see it like I need, I have one here, one here and one here. So it needs to be seamless. This is something that is pretty cool. So we, we will turn our haircuts really versatile. So right now I'm using one of my favorite products and I think this is one of our latest launches. It's, it is called Heat Styling Spray. And it's a heat protector and it's gonna help me to have this smooth shine and uh, control hair. This is one of my favorite products because of the smell. The other one is dry volume glass. And I'm using this basically, whenever I'm using it, my clients are like, I need more, I need more. So I'm adding a lot of product and using my comb to um, have better distribution of my product. So I, have, I need to open the hair and let it fall with the product in it. This is something that I found really tricky and really nice because there is sometimes 
whatever I'm having my product just on top, there's some frizzy parts that is inside that I need to control too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my flat iron and use my comb to control the part and connect my top with the remaining hair. Remember, even if you're having this um, uh, curly movement waves, I would recommend to have a little bit straight at the end just to make some modern look. Mm -hmm. However, in my slick look, what I'm looking is having this sub movement at the end going inside towards the face. So it will make my, my face look like really, really soft. My hairline is gonna look really, really soft. It's gonna show that I have a lot of control. And what I love about the product, it's like, it's, it's not heavy. You know that we are silicone free products. So basically we could add a lot of our products and what it does is basically get your hair looks and feel way much better. So I think this is quite nice because it helps me to control frizz at a lot of shine and also to get me the, yeah, the heat protection on it. So while I continue doing this in my, I need to get a, a darker hair mannequin too because I know you, I love my Latin clients. I love my darker hair clients. So uh, that's the reason why I'm, I'm using this one and my hair it was a blonde one. But what about you, Michael Sean? What are you doing? Well, as we finish up our looks today, again, the whole dichotomy, the, the dueling scissors, different things to recap. So you saw a real crisp line out of both haircuts to establish the guide. Eddie demonstrated that. That took us right up to where I mixed it up. I did a fringe, blown out with blowout, very soft to print uh, uh, approach, using my air crafting, using aircraft first for what? For length, and then aircraft for what? For who's answering via text? Everything, literally, toward the head, sliding, elevated, until you create that absolute softness around the face. Wow, my hair's big. Next. We went through, Eddie showed you a more precise thing. Super great tip of the day for really getting that clean, precise, more strong look. Then we come over here, I layered it, I softened it using axis for shape to sort of blend into the entire shape. Bounced it back to Eddie. Eddie did something where he actually helped to collapse and condense the shape. So if she's got a sofa on her head, if she wants to be like the latest sleek Kardashian or Ariana Grande, it's not gonna happen. So you gotta remove some of that weight. Then bring it back to Hollywood, California. I took the same technique and turned it upside down, literally, with the scissor in the upward direction, with the weed in the upward direction, and then the pressing down toward the head. That gives us the look before here. Eddie is sleeking it with heat styling spray, also one of my favorites. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a large iron. I'm gonna wear a glove, not because I think I'm Michael Jackson. Oh, there's a hole in Michael Jackson last week. Not because I think I'm, <laughs> but because I don't like to burn myself. I don't know about you, but I like to get close to the iron and I appreciate my knuckles and my nails and I don't wanna burn them. The other thing I'm gonna use is not hairspray. It's, we referred to it as magic water earlier. I'm just going to use the weightless spray because what I wanna do to get this kind of luscious, bouncy look out of the hair, you've got to steam the curl in. You can't burn the curl in. You can't starch the curl in. I don't care what product you're using. It needs a little steam. And so I want you to spray the weightless as if, you know, you know how they say you're supposed to spray perfume and then walk into it? We're hairdressers, we never do. We're like, we put it everywhere, right? But I want you to just think of that fragrance approach from a distance, a light, light mist, fan the excess off. I'm then going to take a large iron. You can use Marcel or any type you have. Let's comb that section first, making sure we're getting all the hair. And then with the iron in an upward direction, I'm going to ribbon the hair. Don't twist the hair ribbon the hair 
and I have a rotating iron. I find this works very easily. I'm rotating the thumb and then I'm pulling that end down. And this is, I got this idea because I used to watch my stepsister Kim do this 1970s. You know, Charlie's Angels was on TV. The number one show was Chip. We sat around the fire and watched Little House in the Prairie. And this was how she used to style her hair. And I don't know, there's just like this juiciness to it. There's this softness to it, that smooth lux that feels rich. And it feels like it's happening again now because we will throw a hot roller in their hair. They will throw a little something in their hair. So this is how I'm putting, I put the finish on both sides. And what I like to show you is that it, it comes out very easily into something where you don't see a curl at all. And here it's something that I can reactivate quite easily, even though it was curled earlier this morning. So Eddie, are you finishing up your side? I'm going to do one more curl here and we'll take your final questions, folks. We have superstar Eddie here. Ask those questions. We'd love to answer them now. Yes. So um, I would love to share before we finish, Michael Sean, a quick tip that I found pretty, pretty important for those who are doing styling. Um, and also because we're talking about our heat, heat styling spray, there is some hairdressers. I don't know if the U.S. hairdressers are doing the same things, but I'm calling just I'm calling it because my Latin American hairdressers are doing it. So I found this is not the right way to do it, or at least the 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 the, 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 the reason why I'm getting more freeze. So let's say that we are in a rush and we would love to have our client ready and so fast. There's a lot of people, even though there's people doing it at home, they go like this with a flat iron. They go like really fast and going like this. This is, this is cause friction. And at the, at the end, it's gonna turn into a frizzy, not clean, um, straight hair. So what I would recommend is instead of going like that much, thinking about like this is gonna help us to turn our hair like straight or better, I will add my product. And like I said at the beginning, the, the, uh, the way that I love to do it, it's pulling out this hair and make it fall like this. So basically like adding the product and then grabbing the section that I'm gonna work with and use, add, I would say the same tension, same speed and not in a rush. So let's think about people who is doing this like a lot. I'll take the same, the same time to create a slick version without that much trouble. So I'll go slow. My ends, I'm gonna pull it a little bit inside. And I'm pretty sure my hair is gonna look slick and it's gonna last way much more time and it's gonna look amazing for photo shoots or just for my regular clients. I'm always thinking about like, if I'm doing hair, I need to do it like my client is gonna take a photo shoot. So they need to look with this Photoshop look without the Photoshop. So <laughs> this is a tip that I would love to use because it's gonna control better and the product is helping me a lot. Remember what I said at the beginning? Three things product, application, and technique. So my product is heat styling. My application will be basically fanning out. So I'm going to pull my hair up, get my lightweight spray, which is silicone free. It's not gonna make my hair feel greasy at all. I could add a lot of my product. Once it's done, I'm gonna come through it to get more product, like the distribution better. And then my technique will be basically using my flat iron really slow and controlling my section. And that's it. Slipper version of my, of my bob, but without any trouble. So I'm done, Michael, Sean. <laughs> You're, we, we never want you to be done. I could listen to you all day. Um, do we have any questions? We have a question. So Shelly would like to know your curling iron that you're using. Is, there, is that barrel textured? 
Yeah, it is a textured barrel. Um, and it just, when they're, when they're so big, I think, unless you have the gear really tight, it's harder to hold the hair in, particularly with this rolling barrel as well. I find that the sort of ribbing, for lack of a better word, um, really helps to keep the hair in. Um, and you don't really see any lines from it. I'm looking for this one in a Marcel though, because I really prefer it. The brand is upgrade, it's out of Italy, um, hard to find. But uh, our guest uh, three weeks ago, Pooja Shah, she, she has the hookup. So um, we'll let you know, we can add that to our resources page. Fantastic. So we got a lot of comments about how they love the techniques. They love both of the looks, very inspiring. And quite a few people are ready to get back to work and start trying to find out. We, and we're, we're behind you, California. We're doing everything we can. I think we're the only state that's not open yet. So we feel your pain. We know what you're going through. Um, I don't know if people realize that uh, in beauty school, we have to learn about germs, don't we? <laughs> we know how to clean things. Um, so love and support to any who are watching from California. We know what you're going through in the rest of the world. We want to send our loves, our love globally. I am so incredibly proud of the things I read. Um, like, you know, I, I was just interviewing someone recently who took a loan, a personal loan that she could have used for a home or something like that, just to make sure her staff got paid. And it's that kind of human love that that got us into this business of talking to people you know looking into a mirror and enriching people's lives all day long and so we are special people we're good people and we will get through this i assure you eddie thank you so much did we have any more questions going that was everything you guys did a great job I try and keep it to an hour ish we went a little over this time but we had a really extra special trend report eddie thank you so much for joining the show today you're an incredible guest um the products living proof we'll, we'll, we'll type that in where you can find living proof at your local distributor um thank you so much again to a latin americanos who were who were watching us here today muchas gracias for watching and eddie we're gonna we're gonna start planning that men's hair tutorial i think it's a great idea i mean thank you for for having me, a huge, huge hug from the, from Guatemala to all the U.S. and all the world hairdressers that are watching right now. We hope, we prepare this with a lot of love for you guys. I think that this is something that I would love to thank Colleen and Michael Sean to put this together and helping the hairdressers to get something different during this quarantine. I think this is amazing. Thank you guys. And of course, Thank you so much for all who's watching. I think uh, we were trying to get something that it's that you could sell really fast and you will learn something different. And as I said at the beginning, I know that we know, I know we know that you know how to cut, but we would love to share the way that we see the things. And we are trying to make it easier for you guys. We're working every single day for you. And we are so happy to share with all of you this time. So thank you so much for having me. So thank you so much, everyone. If there are no further questions, I love you so much, mean it. And we will see you in a few weeks. Thank you, everybody. Bye.